What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerdcast for the next episode of Masquerada. My name is Splattercat. Happy to have you here today as we continue to have more conversations and do more talky talky in between doing our stabby stabby. So let's talk to Purple Dude. Quite a thing, isn't it? I wonder what she'd once been like. She? My masquerade. You're so sure it was a woman? I like to think so. I can only imagine how the city would react to this if they found out. Do you think we might one day be able to communicate with them? I don't even know if they're sentient anymore. It's worth a try, though, isn't it? Be my guest. If you can hear me, give me a sign. Hm. She must be sleeping. <laughs> I don't know if I could wear... I mean, it's sort of like if you cremate somebody and then you use their remains to make, like, a carbon mask. It just seems a little grim is all. I don't know if I could wear what used to be a human being on my face. Unless it was, like, Mad Max, and then in that case, it seems like it would become socially acceptable. Ready for the sojourn, Damien? It's so exciting. I heard they're selling the anthologies of Mayara Terrell. Damien, we already have half of them. But the collection has Mayara's notes. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's go get the stories we have. Maybe we can trade them in for a better price. Your son is close to his culture. Sometimes too close. Forgets that we're in Omba. Color of skin means so little here. Homesick? Terribly so. What is it? <sighs> then... We were supposed to sail tomorrow. Sail? Across the belt, back to Rune. What? Please don't take this the wrong way, but... I watched you and Cyrus grow up maskless. You don't want him to go through that. Neither does Lavia. It's why she buries him in our culture instead of the culture of the city. She doesn't want him to grow up feeling like he's worth less simply because he doesn't have a stupid mask. It certainly kept the light in his eyes. I can only hope it'll stay. You should go. Tomorrow is still ahead of us. You can make it. <laughs> and let you take care of yourself. The last time I did that, you almost set my house on fire. Then I'm serious. Before you came back, there was little reason to stay. But now, maybe you can teach him a thing or two. Me? About life in the city. Ease him into its better half. Give him a mask, maybe. Green. Then, I don't think... Ah, oh, forget I said anything. You have other things to worry about, I'm sure, and so do we. Oh, Ven. Amadea. Cicero. Not now. Please. We did all we could. I know. Thinking of how to tell the Judge Master. It's not every day that I'm required to be the bearer of news as world-changing as this. Mascarines and Dementicati? It's almost too much to believe. But you do? How can I not, with everything that's happened? I'd imagined you to be more... Uh, skeptical than that. I suppose you would, wouldn't you? Tis your honor? <clears throat> if you'll excuse me, Inspettore. I have a report to send. Of course. I don't think that a healthy dose of skepticism is anything unhealthy. Like I feel like if more people were skeptics, there would be a lot of, there would be a lot less hucksters in the world. There'd be a lot less scams in the world. It's just people I think deep down most people have like a desire to dream and to hope that something easy and something beneficial is real and in reality life just doesn't work like that. Just you you don't get anything for free. I mean, they got it all summed up in the old adage that there's no such thing as a free lunch. Like, even right now, my, my wife's brought home a bunch of pamphlets from somebody at her work for some pyramid scheme thing that they're trying to... I was like, this person who gave this to you is not your... I, at worst, they're an idiot. And, I'm sorry, at best, they're an idiot. And at worst, they're not your friend. Don't... 
This is clearly a pyramid scheme. They're trying to get you to sell Tupperware or some bullshit. And then there's probably going to be like a fee for if you try to leave or something. You already have a job. Just stop talking to this person. The fact that they even tried to do this to you shows that they're either really, really dumb, which means you should really, really not be around them, or they're just trying to make money off of you. And both of those things are not okay. They're either trying to exploit you or they're just flat out ignorant. Neither of which is okay. Oh, skill resets. I'm sorry. I thought that was going to be the next storyline thing. Let's head on out. It sounds like we're going to a new location. Although, what's up with our new mascarine? Oh, calls down a meteor storm. Hell yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's the ability that's cracking right there. Invoke your inner Sephiroth. 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 Ooh, I like that one right there with the HP and the focus. What's the new engraving that we got? Instead of Zoe, we've got N. 25 proc chance. I'll just keep the damage. And I'm going to put everybody on Vidoria so that you regenerate HP and focus over time. It's only 2%, but it's better than what the other thing was doing. And I feel like over the long term, it'll be far more beneficial. Now, I can't go down to the cart yet, so let's do whatever we're going to do right here. What? Ah, Inspitore. I was wondering who was going to pick that up. Did you hang it here? It? I don't even know what it is. It's a bone whistle. I used to play with them when I was much younger. With an old friend of mine. Can you still play? Well, that sounded pretty good. Yes, well, uh, we have places to go. Ah, yes, the golden canvas. Ready when you are, sir. Calling it now. His older brother is the guy in the mask. Calling it. Calling it. Ready to go, sir? Who's on the first trip? Yourself, Amadea, Vasco, and the Marshal. We'll come back later for the Mariner and the Innkeeper's family. Let's go, then. Exciting, isn't it, sister? I've never celebrated Seho's sojourn before. Just remember, almost everything there is more expensive than it needs to be. Keep your crescents for the things that you need. Oh, I will. I've got a whole list of them I think I can find there. Uh... Thank you for waiting, Cicero. I just wanted to make sure you got here safe. Don't worry. The Mariner took great care of us. Hurry up, Ma! We haven't got all day. Your son's right. The bazaars await. All right, all right, my boy. Let's go see what the peddlers are offering. Are you going to be all right? Calden, please. Go and enjoy the festival. Just keep an eye out for the grating while you're at it. I'll go check on the others. See if they've spotted anything. All right, then. I've got a few things I think I might be able to find here as well. Dude, I miss Festival Day so much. Like, legit, kids nowadays don't even know. You don't even know! You don't even understand. Because, like, Amazon and eBay give you everything that you want nowadays. And if you can't get it there, you can get it from any other website that you can find. Like, you can find anything you want. Everything from musical instruments to fine leather goods you can get within like two days on the internet very very rapidly But when I was a kid there was no internet and so like festival day was the shit because you would have merchants from like all over like traveling merchants and stuff like that like festival day or like market day or whatever they would set it up downtown and there was just all kinds of stuff it was so awesome Because you didn't have access to things back in the day and so you needed little merchants to come around and actually set up tents and stuff just like this and then normally they would have like a carnival at the end where there'd be like rides and all kinds of stuff. Dude, it was so legit. It was so legit on so many levels. I bet there's a masquerade around here somewhere. We gotta look. Who are these purple dudes? Who are these purple dudes over here? They look like they're up to no good. I don't trust these guys. They're some criminals or something. They're trying to get me. I know it. That's how they get you. They catch you authorized personnel only. They catch you slipping. It's because you don't notice the guy in purple that's doing some gangster shit off in the corner. And then the next thing you know, they're slipping a knife in between your ribs. 
I guess I can't walk in between the tenty things. Anybody want a full loaf of bread left on the ground or like a tomato or something? There's more lore over here. There's got to be a masquerade in this area. The map is just too large. Oh, there's a council of kitties over here. Hail to the council of kitties. Strangely enough, we've seen no masquerines around, so I'll just work my way through the characters one by one, I guess. Thinking of buying something? This one. Valenturia. Tales of the Second Canticle. <sighs> Lysandra used to sing it too. Must have picked it up from your brother. Was she any good at it? <laughs> Terrible. But she was never sour about it. You know, she did it for you. I know. What she did five years ago. I knew she did it to protect me. That didn't make it any easier to swallow. But now, what have I done? It'll be all right. Cicero, I'm so sorry. It's just, ever since leaving the Malacate, I've been scared to be a part of anything again. It's all right. I understand. Now, chin up. We've got a grating to find, yeah? Yes. <laughs> yes, we do. Thank you, Cicero. There are different types of people in the world. Some people can, like, follow through with plans without absolutely, like, I guess bathing themselves in the plan, immersing themselves in it. And other people are like me. Where when they get into something, they tend to go in head first. They tend to dive in headlong and just make it like a huge part of their life and something that defines them. And when it falls apart, it's really, really difficult to come back from that. Like, I can't even describe how difficult it is to come back from that. When one of your endeavors becomes like a part of your being. It's like a fiber of your soul and then it just gets ripped out from underneath. You know, it's no longer an option. That shit hurts. It can take a couple years to recover from. So I understand where she's coming from right now. Thinking to buy one? <laughs> buy a flute. And nothing is worth as much as a flute crafted by the flautist's own hands. I'm here to see if I can pinch some inspiration. Well, that one looks interesting. Aha! That's a Cato flute with three individual mouthpieces. Only airbrands can bring out the beautiful harmonies they were meant to produce. Far too cumbersome for a traveler like me, though. What's your type of flute, then? That one, over there. Simple. It's a traditional runic flute called Eniodi. It was brought over with runic culture in the fourth canticle, even before the Terals came. But of course, you don't want to hear about the fourth canticle, do you? I don't? Not when it pales in comparison to the second, no? Why would you say that? Oh, it's just something I overheard once upon a time. That life in the second canticle was... How should I put it? Worth dreaming of. Where did you hear that? You didn't have to lie to me, you know. About the artifacts being the key to creating masquerines. It would have made no difference to me. Who have you told? No one. Please. Then what are you getting at? I've been trying to tell you, ever since I saw you at the Bleeding Beetle. But I just wasn't sure how. What is it? It's... How do I put this? I'm... The Bloodless. Yes, I am, in fact, him. Uh, but that's... If you heard the conversation I had with Amadea, you must have returned quite early in the night. Timings don't match up if you needed to report to the Bloodless first. Even less so if you were supposed to spread rumors. You have lackeys for that, don't you? Yes, you've made good deductions, but... I won't tell the others. As long as you promise to keep the details of the artifacts to yourself, too. I... I suppose that'd be fair. 
Is there anything else you wish to say? Only that I haven't seen any sign of the grating yet. Well, keep looking then. I'll go see what I can find. Bosco, I do appreciate the honesty. <sighs> so much for that. So he turned out to be the bloodless. To be fair, I've been pondering other things, so I hadn't really thought about the fact that he might be it. But it does make sense. I mean, it's a twist that I would have thought of if I was, like, dungeon mastering this game. The way that I do it, the way that I, well, I write anyways when I orchestrate stuff like this, is I get the flow of the storyline, and then I'll sit down and I'll refine just one, so I'll make bubbles. This happens. Leads to this, leads to this, and then I make two more bubbles. These bubbles lead to this, lead to this, and then from there I make little legs that jump off, and, like, there are little events and things that happen in between, or little ways I can twist the story around without actually setting it in stone, so if the players do something I don't really expect, I have options, basically, to draw from. I didn't know you liked carvings. Cicero, I didn't see you there. What have you got there? Well, nothing. Calden? You have the most damnable timing. Hmm. What is it? When I was a skipper, I used to go down to the shore and scour the beaches for these. Sun skulls. The type of coral. That's a rather ominous name, isn't it? Sun skulls? On the contrary. The midnight belt is black, but somehow these manage to retain their brilliant color. A ray of light in a sea of shadows. A source of hope in a mire of despair. I'd have carved one myself if I had the time, but since we're here... Who's it for? Each one of my kids has one. Jaxus did. My brother does. I get them for the people in my life that have given me hope. This one is for you. Me? For not turning me away even though you easily could have. Calvin. In this city, it is difficult to call one a friend and truly mean it. But I do, and I want you to know that. Calvin, I, I don't... Please. Thanks. Any sign of the grating? Not yet, but I'll keep looking. true of any part of life when it comes to friendships and whatnot they're hard to come by those real friendships those unbreakable ones those people that'll take a bullet or a knife for you in a heartbeat those people that'll financially wreck themselves for you those are the people that are hard to find those people that don't expect anything in return but when you find them you got to hold on to them man as you get older more and more of your friends from the old days are going to fall off they're going to have families they're not going to have time for you stuff like that and that's just part of the way life works but if you can hold on to a couple of those friends like i've had a friend now for over a decade, who's just always been there, like, regardless, thick or thin, he's there, you know, on the couch ready for you. You gotta hold on to those friends, you gotta fight for them. Go to any links for them. Don't lose them. Because they are rare indeed. Bristlethorn for your armor. Someone knows a thing about polishing, I see. Of course. Who do you think keeps my buckles shining? <laughs> so, what's Fabio's opinion on what's been going on? The Judge Master's keeping an eye out. He understands that it's too early to act until more concrete trails can be found. Or at least until we know what the artifacts can do. And when you do, you will know about them? Oh, Inspectore, know that your efforts at undermining my loyalty to the Luca are in vain. I don't understand. You can clearly see what is at stake, but yet you think it's more important to keep your guild informed. Even though you are fully aware that they might, in the future, jeopardize the investigation. Do you know who my father is? I don't know any Luca that carry the De Felici family name. No. De Felici was my mother's family name. My father was Judge Zainrius. <sighs> I had heard he was a great judge. He was also a great father, who taught me everything that I know about the Luca. My earliest memory ever was of a Luca parade, staring at rows and rows of beautiful gold as he carried me in his arms. <laughs> oh, it had been a sight. A man as large as my father, tenderly holding a little girl 
at a Luca Marine. He told me that he never heard the end of that tale from those around him, but he ensured daily that I knew he did not regret it. To him, displaying his love for me was worth more than his reputation as a strong, steeled man. But if you've heard of him before, then you'd know that his song is upon the singing tree. It's been there for a decade. I loved, and still love my father, Inspiratore. And the Luca is his legacy. Have I helped you understand? Yes. Good. Now, if that is all, I believe we have an entrance to find. Lots of good conversations being had in this game. We're trying to find out about, or we're starting to learn about the backstory of everybody else. That's another thing that's hard to come by. A good father. Although I've often wondered if, like, the good dads, you know what I mean? The real dads. The big piece of chicken dads. You feel me? I always wonder if there's less of them nowadays, or if it's just that, like, good dads don't get the press that bad dads do. I'm thinking it's probably the latter, because, you know, like, most of the dudes I know that have kids, they're good dads. Like, they do the stuff that dads are supposed to... Oh, look, we were looking for the great, and it's brightly, redly, garishly colored over here, and nobody found it. Most of the dads that I know are good dads. You know, most of my friends that have kids and whatnot. It's just they don't get publicized like the bad dads who, like, ruin kids' lives and stuff like that. You know, good dads don't sell newspapers, if those are even a thing anymore. Ah, oh, here we go. This is it, then? Let's find out. Two of you will follow me. The other two will stay out here in case anything goes wrong. Watch for signs. Uh, Calden and uh, this I think this is going to be our arranged party for the rest of the playthrough. It's not that I don't like either of these characters. In fact, I'm tremendously conflicted about who I want to play the game as as mains. It's just like one of those things where I'm picking my favorites right now. Uh, I do like her. I, I think she's about tied with... I, I really, really, really like Calden. I want to keep him in the party as much as possible. But Tiziana, she's just about tied with Amadea for me. It's just you gotta pick one, and so arbitrarily I went with Amadea. Uh, the only person I'm on the fence about is Vasco. Vasco's alright, but he's just like, you know, he's that stereotypical cool, barty, suave character, and I've seen that trope too much, and so I, I'm more likely to leave him out. Whereas Amadea, Tiziana, and Calden are a bit more unique, and so I like them better. It's like there's a whole world under here. Light, over there. <laughs> We're in the stoner tunnel. Awesome. We got a new masquerade, and that's going to be for Amadea. Ah, ooh, she didn't really have that many options, so. What's wrong with them? Stone salt. Addicts. It seems like it. Do we need to worry about them? We don't have. Contadoni. It's not uncommon for them to be seen with the dealers, but. Something on your mind? Nothing. We should keep looking around. Did you find something? The lady has told how the seed will save, and how the knife will take the life it gave. The shadows will come as they did before, but she will save us, so she swore. The shadows will come? What do they mean? And who is this lady they keep mentioning? I don't know. Is there anything else? Nothing legible. Judging by the quality of the handwriting and the choice of rhyme, I'd say that whoever wrote this hadn't done it with a proper mind. Then these are just a bunch of addicted lunatics? Addicted lunatics do not so easily infiltrate the registry and capture one of its regenti. It seems like there is nothing else here. We should keep moving. All right, and with that said, I think we're just about out of time for this episode. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here for the next episode of Masquerada. This is a game that took me by surprise, and it's really kind of uh, knocked me on my ass. I like this game a lot, and I could see myself playing it a ton of my free time were I not playing it here on the channel. If you wanted to get a copy for yourself, check down below. I've got the Steam link for you. That all out of the way, I think it's time for me to bid you all a fond farewell and adieu, so... Hi to everybody, and I will see you in the next episode when we meet again to go further down into the sewers and figure out what's going on with the Shadow Lady and why all these druggies are laying around on dirty sewer floors. Also why it's called the Stoner Tunnel, although I think that's fairly apparent at this point. Bye!